If you've been looking for a way to self-heal your scoliosis naturally without surgery, then this episode is for you. Hi, this is Zia and this is Kamana and welcome to Holistic Nomads TV. Where ancient wisdom and modern science can help you to have more clarity and energy in your life. So, today's topic, we are still going to continue about the treatment of scoliosis that I did. That basically, Kimana made a plan for it. I recommended some of it, yet she followed her own intuition, created some variations. So <laughs> Very. Yeah. The rebel in me still want to do my own thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so last week we already talked about the treatments that I received from others that Kimana recommended for me to get from other healers and also trainings. And this episode we are focusing on the treatment that I did to myself, did and still do Yeah. for the rest of my life. What are the self-care practices that you can do for yourself at home to have more self-control on where you're guiding your life? If you haven't watched the previous episode, make sure to watch because that's where Kimana explained about what is scoliosis, Ayurvedic treatment, sorry, Ayurvedic perspective on healing scoliosis and then my own progress of scoliosis healing from 2009 until today. So, first thing, we are going to talk about the important principle of balancing vata. I think this is very important, so I think it's important to repeat that again, why we need to balance yeah, vata. to repeat balancing vata, because vata loves repetition. And uh, easy to forget. Yeah. So basically, vata creates dryness and irregularities inside the body, creates lightness of the bones, um, it tends to influence conditions like scoliosis and if vata becomes excessive either in the person's constitution, in their life, their relationships, then it will tend towards imbalances like scoliosis as one of the many. Um, so if we balance this deeper causative factor, this disease forming influence, vata, then we can decrease many different conditions including scoliosis being one of those. For more info on that one, check out the previous episode. <laughs> so now I remember you often mention about the importance of remembering, understanding the qualities of the elements of the dosha, elements of dosha, yep. as a easier way to treat um, a imbalance, especially if you self heal yourself. I would say it's the primary way. To look at Ayurveda is to first learn the qualities. What are the qualities of the doshas? What are the qualities of the elements? And through learning that, we'll connect it to all parts of life, whether it's self-healing or helping others. The qualities are the key to opening the wisdom of Ayurveda. Key. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. They're the key to get into Ayurveda. So, um, uh, based on your treatment plan that you created for me, and then after five years of so like my own self learn accompanied with you as my regular questions and answer my google man so i uh, break it down i break it down um have five main qualities that all that i need to you know keep in mind every time i do my treatments for my scoliosis the first one is regularity slash repetition slash routine same same can you explain more on that so basically Vata, because it dominates with irregularity and a lack of routine, lots of change in its life, therefore it is balanced by routine, regularity, um, repetition on things. When we have repetition and regularity, it stabilizes the nervous system, it keeps us calm and centered. When we have lots of change and new and new, and I'm not sure what time I'm going to get food, it changed from yesterday, when I'm going to sleep, um, when I'm going to encounter those relationships, when I'm going to have exercise, then it will start to destabilize the nervous system. There's this uncertainty in life. So we need to have a little bit of uncertainty to keep life fun. But if we can, have as many regular things, especially sleeping, eating and meal times, makes the nervous system much more stable. This is, I found, one of the most difficult um, qualities to, you know, integrate in my life because I am such a someone that hates routine 
but after understanding the why and also seeing where actually these colleagues has come from in my life one of the main causes is because of this um, irregularity so now I'm actually really really love to be back home and then just having everything in the same place and because of that I can have my morning routine without even thinking and that really feels that create this support and love that last week we talked about how important to have this support, sense yeah. of support. Next quality is warmth. Warmth, yeah. So the opposite of warmth being cold and, and Vata generally dominates with cold, meaning it would be balanced by warmth. When we have cold inside the body, the tissues tend to contract and they tighten. Um, cold is associated with most pain imbalances in the body as well. Pain is where block of flow, either a nerve is blocked by impingement or circulation is blocked. So scoliosis is often associated with pain conditions. The body gets colder, it contracts, it draws in more, and circulation decreases. When we have warmth, we decrease pain responses in the body, like a warm water bottle, or a nice warm room, or a warm loving embrace. Now, all of these things will enable the body to increase circulation, increase flow, and vata to move things in the body easier. I love that, warm love. Warm loving <laughs> embrace. <laughs> Next one is lubrication, or another word is the unctuous. Unctuous, oily, lubricating. So vata tends towards dryness. If we have dryness in the body, it will decrease circulation. Imagine like a dry creek is not going to be circulating and flowing water so well and debris builds up compared to a nice wet creek that's moving through well is going to take all of the old debris and things with it. It's the same inside our circulation. When we are really moist, our circulation flows well. When we are getting dry, it's deficient and it's just drips of water coming through, affecting the whole body. As the spine has these fluid discs in it, uh, the, between each of the vertebrae. So these discs are filled with the fluid and if we get dry, they decrease in size, making more compression easier in the spine, making whatever tendencies for scoliosis present easier as well. So moisture, rubbing oils on the body, drinking coconut water, having good amounts of minerals helps these discs between the vertebrae to stay fluid and plump and decrease tendencies to scoliosis. Talking okay, about drinking coconut water. Coconut water, right? <laughs> Glad we were in side. Bali. Yeah. So, coconut water available anywhere. And, and needed. And needed. <laughs> it's hot. Next quality is stability, support, groundedness, more like that. Yep, so Vata is associated with change and lightness. So, stability is associated with heaviness and regularity. And this heaviness allows the body to build decent tissues, to build good quality muscles. So part of support is actually building muscles, strength and conditioning training, allowing the body to build up. Another part of support comes under noticing that you're supported in your environment. Who are the people that do support you? How does your house support you? How does your profession support you? and consciously being aware of where you receive support in your life because the spine is a reflection of where we receive support in our life. If we don't feel supported out here, then our spine too will start to reflect that and show that, oh, I'm uncertain about life, especially through this upper part here. The spine will go, oh, I don't know, and the lower part will contract with fear and uncertainty in the psoas muscle. So they are regularity or routine, warm, warmth, warmth <laughs> that's yeah. the hard word, uh, lubrication or unctuous, and then stability and support. Great. Next one, we are going to reveal the, <laughs> reveal the <laughs> self healing treatment plan yep. that I've been doing for the last five freaking years. It's a long time. And then again, like last week episode, I need to mention that this is not for instant result seeker. Often people say, well, that's a miracle. Like, you know, um, scoliosis now it looks, you know, more straight. No, pain. I was like, it is a miracle and it is not because in the same way, I'm actually put so much hard work every single day in the morning. And then like when others want to eat 
whatever, go to party and stay up late, I was like, no, I need to have my regular sleeping time. So, miracle or not, it depends on how you see it, but certainly a lot of hard work and dedication. So, again, like last week, we are going to define the treatment plan based on the three main categories, spirit, mind, and body. Spirit, we have two. The first one is meditation, especially uh, detachment practice. Can you explain more on that? So when we meditate, modern science has found that it affects our nervous system and our brain. And one of the things that it, it happens in the brain is there's a part of the brain that is associated with isolation and separateness. Oh no, it's me against the world. And when, the more we meditate, the more that part of our brain starts to shrink and get less. So then we have less of this, oh no, me, fear response that goes on. And we have more of a togetherness, oneness association that takes place in the body-mind. So that togetherness, unity, is something that balances Vata. Vata often feels separate by itself, worries, nervous system imbalances. So the more we meditate, we let go of our attachments to the things that we think we need and past impressions and fears and, and things that we've held in the tissue that may be held in the spine too. And through meditating, we process the old and we create a new way of relating with the world that is one of more unity and natural support. So then we can see even in times of challenge, we can start to go, oh no, it's not just a challenge to me, it's a lesson for something that I need to be aware of. And we're more looking at the team and how we can work together and what is the deeper purpose rather than something that happened to me. It's something that's happening to us. So this is a lot related to the, um, what is that, the astrology treatment that we talked about last week. Yeah. On still in the same category, spirit. Yeah. So while uh, the astrology comes from, uh, from, from you, from the healer, which is you, yeah. which was you, and this one is how I apply that into my daily life. I might know it that this is part of the things that I need to process, let's say scoliosis, but I, if I just know it without actually accepting it, surrendering to it, and embracing it through meditation, then that knowledge is still useless. That's that right. Useless. It's not useless, it's just more powerful yeah. if we back it up with a daily practice. It's like anything in life. If, if you want to be an athlete, uh, you need to practice it, you need to do it. Athletes train five to seven days a week to be what they want to be. It's the same with spirituality. If you want to feel connected to everything in life and great purpose, you need to have a daily practice where you create connection with everything in life and you exercise the spiritual component of us. So meditation is one of those yeah. practices. The second one is still a meditation, but another form of meditation, which is forgiveness meditation. Yeah. This is um, very interesting because last week we talked about this five love language and how um, I create misconception that I wasn't supported by my family, but apparently it's just not in the way that I wanted to be supported. Yeah. And then, yet yeah, it's been there for years and years. So it's, there's this pattern in my behavior, in my mindset, that needs to be changed. And then when you re recommend me to do this forgiveness meditation, I was like, I think I already forgive them, but actually all this deep layer is still there. Yeah. So can you tell me a little bit more about this forgiveness meditation? Yeah, the relationships are often some of the biggest emotional triggers in our lives. So when we relate with another human being, especially a human being we love and care about, and we may feel at certain times that they didn't respect the love that was there. And, and then we start to build a whole story around that respect and love. So we, we need to, over our life, develop an awareness that all human beings are looking for happiness, love, and unity. This is the big goals that we are all looking for in some ways. Yet, we may make decisions that are not actually taking us towards happiness and togetherness because of our misconceptions and our understandings of life. So we just need to surrender and go, oh, okay, they're doing their best from their point of view. In, in order to really process that, 
inside, because often that's not our perspective, especially at the time of being hurt, you know, of us creating hurt in relation to someone's actions, we then store that in the body. So we can go through a forgiveness process. And the one that I use is based on the Hawaiian system, the Ho'oponopono, and it works through a three-part forgiveness. So first, forgiving them for what they may have done to you, then forgiving yourself for what you may have done to them, and thirdly, forgiving yourself for what you may have done to yourself <laughs> in the process and the psychology that you've dealt with there. And it's about a 20 to 30 minute meditative process to take through and it's really good for any past relationships you've had where you may still be harboring some emotional tension with that. Yeah, I really, really like uh, that forgiveness meditation um, process because all these some you know, I put myself as a victim, but really, I might do the same to them. And also, I am actually the cause for my own imbalances. So, yeah, it's, yeah this three step of this forgiveness meditation, I found really special. Yeah. So, that's the spirit category. Now, we move on to the mind category. The first one, we already mentioned at the beginning, is the loving, supportive relationship. Yeah. So, I need to talk from my personal experience that since I'm with you, basically, the pain that I usually um, experience in daily, you know, time, uh, because I receive this amount of love and support that I never received before, that pain is just slowly disappear, and that without even doing any, you know, treatment yet on whatever. But that psychological and emotional feeling that you're being loved and heard and supported, that's already enough, and that's give a huge impact. Love is huge. Yeah. yeah. Happy to love you. Oh. So we've already talked a lot about that, so you're just going to skip that one. I'm going through <laughs> oh, that. <laughs> use the emotion. Skip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Woo. So the second one is the sleeping pattern about sleep early, wake up early, and avoid late night sleep. Yeah. So... <laughs> The circadian rhythm that takes place over a 24 hour cycle is really important, especially for our mind and our psychology. Um, we've been evolving for hundreds of thousands of years, possibly millions of years, our genetic line on this planet to wake with the sun, uh, to inspire our day and to go to bed once the sun goes down. And if we start to move outside of that rhythm, it starts to affect many different hormones inside the brain, and most specifically serotonin. And serotonin is our happiness, enthusiasm, feel good about the day, feel good about relationships, feel good about our lives, the people we interact with. And we make most serotonin in the morning, close to sunrise. We'll make even more if we exercise in the morning and we watch the sunrise. So if we stay up late and use lots of lights at night, then it will interfere with that cycle because we're meant to move into melatonin and then calm, relax, process our old psychology uh, and this can really interfere with those cycles and interfere with our ease towards happiness in our life. Hard. That was hard. <laughs> yeah. It took many years for me to adjust to that as well. At the beginning, I was like, no, I want to stay up late. I'm having so much fun at night. But I realized that actually I have more fun now by going to bed early and waking up early. Next one, number three, is the afternoon rest time. You mentioned a lot about, especially when I feel just down around three, four, then you're like, just rest, take it, you're going to need rest. Why yeah. is that? Um, in the 24-hour cycle, we have certain periods that are related to each one of the doshas. So the afternoon 2 to 6 p.m. time is related to the vata dosha, and as vata influences scoliosis a lot, it's one of the time periods where we can affect and influence vata very easily. Our energy levels naturally drop a little bit in this afternoon cycle 2 to 6 p.m., and they'll drop even more if vata is aggravated. There's too much vata in the body. We will really drop in the afternoon cycle between 2 and 6 p.m. 
So if we respect that and we tune into the natural cycles, we've already been up early since the sunrise, we've been doing things, we've had our lunch, yeah, we've organized to finish off our last intensive activities, and we rest a little bit in the afternoon, a bit of creative relaxation, maybe a little bit of gardening, going for a walk in a park. These are the sorts of things that can rejuvenate our energy, our prana, and stop us from depleting ourselves. And if we don't do these things and we go, oh, I'm getting a little bit tired, but I'm going to push through anyway, then we'll generally create adrenaline, cortisol, stress response hormones that will further aggravate vata. And for a little while, you'll be like, oh, I'm back. I've got my energy again. But really what you did was you turned your stored energy into life force again, meaning less resources in the body, meaning more tendency to nervous system, muscle and bone disorders that happen over time. And why specifically Yoga Nidra? And Yoga Nidra is a meditative process that's particularly good for Vata. Vata is generally um, uh, good for lead meditations where you can lead their mind through the body. And a Yoga Nidra is like a yogic sleeping process where you lead the mind into different parts of the body and it's extremely rejuvenative form of meditation. Done lying down. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm so tired, I just slept after that. Yeah, most of the time. Most of the time. Yeah, most of the time. Sometimes, yeah. can I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next one is this um, interesting way of self hypnosis where I will um, hypnosis, self hypnosis myself in front of a mirror and then. I will repeat this sentence, I will say it. This is the way I would like to be. This is very important to me. Um, can you tell a little bit more about that and who actually yeah. taught me about this? So this originally comes from a great yoga therapist named as Peter Clifford, whose school is Anahata Yoga, I'm pretty sure. And, um, it basically, at the end of doing a private session with Peter Clifford, He'll be going through and adjusting your body, getting your posture and your mindset into a really great state. And then towards the end of the session, your body's transformed. It's a new you that is there. There is different balance and postural assessment that's there. And he gets you to look into a mirror. And you're looking into the mirror. You're looking at the new you. And you say to yourself, this is the way I want to be. This is very important to me. And that saying to yourself starts to recalibrate and reset. Otherwise, the nervous system walks out of the session and goes, oh, that, yeah, that felt good, but then, oh, here's the old way again. This is how I hold myself. And we move back into our patterns, our previous emotions. So using the mind and the nervous system to imprint into the psychology a new way of being and telling your subconscious mind, this is important. You need to take note of this right now. So in my personal practice, after I done my own yoga therapy session, especially at the beginning when the difference is just so huge, then I will look at myself in the mirror, like full length mirror ideally, and then I will repeat this saying, this yeah. mantra, this sentence. Yeah. This is the way that I would like to be. This is very important to me. And it was hard because it makes me cry at the beginning. Or now? Yeah. Because <laughs> it was like, it, yeah, it just feels weird, you know, like, um, this is where you want to be, like, the change that you wish you want. Yeah. And, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Very emotional, Zia. <laughs> Next one, number five, the last um, method of in the mind category is the morning routine. Or basically routine in general, to have daily habit. But I specifically mentioned morning routine because that's the easiest one in my life. Probably for some other sleep routine, but basically to have that kind of daily habit. Some form of routine, as I mentioned at the beginning, eating times, sleeping times, and exercising times are some of the most important. And particularly in Zia's case, part of the morning routine associated around having a regular exercise practice. And we'll look at the details of that as we move into the body section that come up next. Cool. Now, the hard one, <laughs> the form one, the body category. And this is basically the things that I do most day, I would say every single day. Yeah. The hardest one um, 
was at the, at the very beginning, which is to build that as a habit. But after that, you know, become adjusted, we, our mind body becomes so into it, it's just easier. So the most difficult, probably the first few months, the first one year is still hard, but then after that it gets better and easier. It becomes effortless, yeah. The first one, part of my um, body therapy that I do to myself is joint rolling. Why? What's the correlation? Some people might ask between scoliosis and joint. Well, scoliosis is a condition that's affecting the joints of the spine. Yeah. And joint rolling is the practice of rolling our joints in circular directions. And it's every joint of the body. And the joints are like crossroads for a lot of pathways and circulation and energy blocks at the joint. Circulation tends to block at the joints. And if we do these regular joint rolling practices, we tend to release vata stored in these tissue areas so it can flow again. And if it needs to get out, it can be excreted from the areas that it needs to leave the body. In um, Satchananda Yoga, they actually call it the wind removal sequence. It is a whole series of joint rolling. Yeah, my favorite is like click, click, click. <laughs> Little clicks of barter release. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. We're not talking about pushing the extreme of the range of movement here and trying to make it click. We're just talking about gentle circular movements and if it clicks naturally, that's okay. I had a weird experience every day, basically. Every time I ro royal, royal joint, rolling my joint. <laughs> yeah. Um, somehow there is this clear mucus coming out of my nose. Yeah. Can you correlate that? Well, clear mucus is associated with vata. Um, there must be some vata stored in the joints and it's relating to a release point. As I said, if there's excess and it needs to release, then it will move to the areas it needs to release. For Zia, it was releasing out of the head and the face, so nose was one of the channels. Cool. So a second one is, I do lots of yoga. But usually in the past when I do yoga, I just do a typical vinyasa, you know, like, whoo, pumping, you know? Yeah, pump the jam, <laughs> go for it. Uh, but then you are giving me a, um, advice on focusing more on this stretching and strength and conditioning. The stretching part, that was easy, but the strength and conditioning part, it was difficult because you need to hold the position, the asana, for like a little bit longer. Why? Um, in the body, exercise is one of our first sort of separations. We should look at the difference between stretching, opening, expanding, uh, listening at uh, one side, and strengthening, pushing harder, building up the body's tissues. And it's this sort of yin-yang counterpart inside the body that enables us to build a good, balanced, happy body. When it comes to vata, particularly, vata is generally associated with a bit more flexibility, a little bit more openness, um, especially when they're young, in Zia's case. So strength and conditioning becomes one of the most important things to apply for vata. And the stronger the body is, particularly the muscles around the thighs, you know, the lower pelvis, the abdominal organ, the back, the easier it is to keep the spine straight and push against gravity. Yeah, and then because let's say on my spine that is S, there is part that is weaker yeah. and that is stronger yeah. or more tense, I'm not saying that's strong. And yeah. then you basically told me to focus on strength conditioning especially in that part. So for example, to do um, side plan, especially in the one that where the muscle is more weak. Yeah. So strengthening particular sides and stretching particular sides. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then the opposite of that is I also do this um, ball rolling therapy. Let me take my thing. So this is the one that I use. So as the one who has scoliosis, very common where one part or not some part is more tense and while the other part is more weak. So while the one is weak gets strengthened, the other part, which is more tense, then I regularly release it, the tense, using this kind of ball. Or you can also use um, tennis ball. Tennis balls can work. Because of the, the, um, the firmness of these balls, a tennis ball doesn't work quite as well, but can be great as an at-home substitute. 
Uh, I personally prefer these balls much more than a tennis ball. And if you're using them with this little yep. sock thing, you can put two together and have them on either side of the spine. If you're using the tennis balls at home, then just use an actual sock. Put the tennis balls inside the sock and it will hold them together. So then your spine can lay in between them and you can roll along the spine. I think the importance to understand with this is that it should be slow. Um, it shouldn't be so intense. It shouldn't be like, ah, I'm trying to rip apart the fascia or the body. Do not think Chinese massage. Think soft, soothing Hawaiian massage. That's what I did at the beginning. Yeah. I was doing it so, when I found this at the beginning, I was like, this is so good. So I just do it so extreme. And then the next day, a few days, it's like, oh, no, it's like a muscle, I feel like. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so we will put the link to this um, product below, it's called Yoga Tune Up, um, our favorite. And then I also, talking about strength and conditioning, then you also mentioned specifically about stabilizing muscle, exercise that focus on that. So a few things that I did was rock climbing, oh my god, Kimana loves rock climbing. Oh, it's so great <laughs> for your stabilizing muscles and we also get to hang a lot. It's one of the functional movement patterns that we don't use so much. And we possibly came from monkeys, which meant that we were hanging a lot in the past. These muscles are so important for our body to hang a little bit. And also, I use this thing called Dura Disc. Dura Disc is basically a balancing disc. It's a disc that's filled with some air. You know? And if we try to balance on top of that, standing either with both feet, on top of it like this, then it's going to force us to activate our stabilizing muscles to be able to balance there. Um, if that's a bit easy for you with both feet, then you move to one foot you know, and try to balance with one foot. If that's easy still, then you try and balance with one foot and do a squat, coming up and down with one foot. It really works to activate the stabilizing muscles. And because you're using more of the small stabilizing muscles, it also means that your workout doesn't have to be as long. If you do 20 squats on the ground, it doesn't compare to 20 squats on this will be much more and start to condition the body in a shorter amount of time as well so making your workout more efficient and more effective yeah so speaking from experience because as someone that has scoliosis um, I have a weaker um, right my right hip is weaker so when I use this at the beginning it's impossible to just even stand balancedly yeah. and then I um, progress then I can use one feet but then my right feet I can't hold it for too long yeah. because of you know that part of the muscle is weaker yeah. which then affect the scoliosis and then so I do this for the last couple months and it's amazing that now I can squat in one feet one five times still five times I need to keep improving on that but yeah it's amazing how um, basically, uh, this improving the stabilizing muscle, especially in the lower part of the body, affects the spine as well. Yeah. Okay, so next one, number five. Let me number five. No, sorry. That's not <laughs> um, Is a regular abhyanga, or also called as self-love massage. That's Maya Tuari's translation of it, Snehana. Um, is to, to love. A Bianca is a Snehana process, so self-loving massage. Basically, we're applying oil to the body. When we rub oil across the body, we improve the circulation of the system. The oil starts to penetrate in. It's quite grounding to have oil rubbed into the body, so it grounds down vata. Also, if the practice is done in the morning with sesame oil, it increases serotonin as well, making us happier for the day too. So it's a wonderful process to lubricate the joints and the body. It can be done as a daily practice, although I personally probably only do it once or twice a week. This morning I did. I did my abhyanga all through my hair. It's probably extra oily from that. <laughs> <laughs> my body, my feet and my legs. I don't necessarily always do the whole body, but I'll do body part priority, whereas Zia does it more often than me. Every day, the whole body. <laughs> the whole body. <laughs> I love it because... Um, instant instant um, gratification, instant feeling was of course as vata dominant. My skin is just dry so easily. So I do that every day, all of my body parts because I, my dry skin is just gone. I don't need to use body lotion anymore. 
Um, and the second thing is when I was busy, then I will prioritize certain areas. So for Vata, you mentioned a lot about the hips down. Yeah. The extremities, is that you call it? That's it. And then because I have scoliosis, then also around my belly and my spine. And then, yeah. On, of course, you mentioned about um, the ideal, ideal, super ideal way <laughs> is to make the oil warm. Yeah, to warm the oil first will increase the penetration into the body. That's going to be more important if you're in a cooler climate. The best way to do that is just to pour boiling water into a cup or a little jar and to have your oil in a glass container and place the whole glass container into the hot water and it will just heat up through that transfer. And after that, have a warm bath, a warm shower to help it even more penetrate. Yep. And what I do, I usually um, use like something like a gloves, scrubbing gloves to get rid of the excess oil or not, especially in this heat of Bali, you might block the pore that doesn't help to release the heat. Yeah, if we leave the oil on all day, then it can block the pores and decrease heat. Traditionally, they used powders and they scrubbed them all over the body, powders of dals and chickpeas and different things, and that would absorb the excess oil afterwards. But in our modern day situation, where we use showers and plumbing, that's a disaster and you end up with all blocked pipes. It's great for when you're at a creek or those sorts of things and you're just going to wash it off in a creek afterwards. Yeah. And what's the best oil of choice? For this sort of condition, one of my favourites would probably be Bala Ashwagandha. It's a specific medicated oil that comes from India. It has herbs cooked into the oil, which means that you're going to get the benefits of those herbs. Many of the herbs balance vata and pitta, the blood and the bones, so an ideal oil if you can get it. If you can't get that, then plain sesame oil or almond oil, and then I'd add a little bit of the Vata essential oil mix that we've created, the Vitality Now blend for Vata. It's called Grounded Enlightenment. It's warming, so it's going to increase the penetration. It's calming to the mind, and it's quite grounding. Cool. So this is the essential oil of um, Vata balancing one that Kimana formulated. We will put the link on how to get this and the other oils on the caption below. That's my favorite one, I'm Yeah. <laughs> Next one is uh, regular meal time. Why is that? Regular meal time. So if the nervous system uh, starts to create prediction on when it would like to eat, especially for Vata and Pitta. So if we have more regular meal times, then our nervous system can relax. I was just reading last night actually that the circadian rhythm is even starting to predict meal times and it will start to secrete um, potassium out through the urinary system based on previous meal times. So if we don't eat at those times, the body's starting to go, oh, we normally eat around 12 o'clock and I'm going to start secreting the potassium out and then, oh, it's one o'clock, I still haven't eaten and then Vata ends up with a deficiency inside the blood because that prediction of the cycle is there. Of course, we need to be aware, eat when hungry, and that's a relevant thing as well, that it's not that eat when hungry or uh, regular meal times. It's trying to find a balance between the two, having regular meals and the right size meals so that you get hungry at regular meal times. That's exactly my experience because in the past my, my hunger is just so unpredictable but because I have a very pita husband that needs to exactly eat at the same time then I slowly build that as a habit and then my body is just now will be hungry at the right time like now it's already eating time so I'm hungry Yeah, ready for some food Ready for some food um, if you want to watch more about uh, this topic, we have loads of Ayurvedic diet um, videos and especially there is one video called 7 Ayurvedic Tips on Eating that's very important. We will put the link on the caption below. Next one, this is very interesting. I think this only applied to me or some Indonesian because we love to eat chili. <laughs> Why do I need to avoid chili? Specifically for Zia, was I, I was observing her scoliosis and where in her back her muscles were pulling towards, where was constricting and, and, and 
holding on, I was seeing that there was a liver gallbladder relationship through Chinese medicine and, and back diagnosis. And inside Zia's body, there's many other, which we'll see when she goes through how I healed acne and other types of things. There's many liver gallbladder relationships in the body. And as we eat chili, it tends to stimulate and fire up the liver function. It creates a lot of heat and, and that excess heat that is also drying. So it's an empty heat. The dryness can aggravate vata. This stimulation can aggravate the liver. And that was starting to create more pain tendencies for Zia and more imbalance in digestion. Oh, <laughs> she had to cut out chili. Yeah, it was fake friendship. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fake friendship with chili. Yeah. You loved it, but it wasn't loving you back. <laughs> no. The last one is herbs, which is vata balancing herbs. What are they? Oh, there's lots of different herbs that can balance vata and really herbal medicine should be chosen for you individually. Yet a general one that's probably going to be quite suitable for many people would be ashwagandha. Ashwagandha is a great herb for the bones, the nervous system, it calms down the mind and the psychology. It's used to strengthen the muscles and the bones. Um, some other herbs that we've used was Guduchi, um, particularly because it works with the nervous system and the blood and it helps to clean out and balance the blood. We also worked with some digestive herbs for a period of time as well. So, Are there specific herbs that you're still taking now? Until now because of this um, addiction with chili for all of these 20 years of my life and that affecting the vata. So on a daily basis I've been drinking decoction tea uh, a mix of Guduchi, Sarifa, Gokshura and the Christmas sweet. Mm, a nice butter and pitta balancing mix there. Yeah. Cool. So if people would like to learn more on how to heal themselves or how to heal others, specifically about let's say Vata, how um, and where can they learn from you? So if you're really interested in helping other people or helping yourself, gaining more control, then I offer trainings within the Thai Vedic Yoga School. I've put together programs in there with six different modules and there's a range of different teachers around the world. Check out the programs on ThaiVedicYoga.com. I hope to see you there in Thailand soon or in Bali in January 2019. Great. So if you would like to learn more about this how to heal scoliosis naturally without surgery with Ayurveda, that's a long title, make sure to um, subscribe, submit your name and email address below because we plan to make this online course more in depth and with demo with how I do all of these practices that I do to myself. Um, so when we have your email, you will be the first to hear when the online course is up. Now, theory without practice is wasteful because hearing leads to forgetting, teaching leads to remembering, and applying leads to mastering. That's why we will encourage you to leave a comment below and share one learning insight from this video. Also, if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe so you will be the first to hear about our future educational videos. And for more resources on health and healing, check out our website holisticnomads.com. There you will find articles, quizzes on Ayurveda, other free resources, and of course, our future events and courses. Thank you so much for watching. We hope it's been beneficial for you. Hope to see you next week. Bye! I'm so much more comfortable with teaching to people. Uh. Yeah, uh, with cameras, it's like... <laughs> feedback? Feedback? <laughs> are you, are you gonna give me the face? Did you understand? Uh, <laughs>